Hey guys, Teeple here. Today we're going to take a look at the Charlemagne, the new tier 6 French premium cruiser that just came out. I got two Rue builds here. The first one is what I ground up the line, the tech tree line with. Norm Scott of Makawa. Pretty good build. I swapped out Swirsky for Norm Scott on this. This is the build I used in these two games, so I'd like to have you guys know what you're watching exactly. I will explain the ship stats and why I made that call in a little bit, but I think the stealth build for the Charlemagne is not a bad option. Now, we got two games here. The first game will kind of cover the stats of the ship and kind of its overarching principles, and then the second game will take a little bit more of an in-depth dive into that one. Now, what is the ship exactly? I don't think this is on the PC version. I believe this is console-specific, so that's kind of interesting and exciting, if true. But I think it looks like a Charles Martel hull. Reminds me a lot of that ship. It has the same gun layout, 3x3 three three in the 203 calibers. Uh, whereas the Algerie, which is the ship we'll be primarily comparing it to as the Tech Tree Tier 6 French cruiser, that is 4x2, two, again, 203s. So you do get an extra gun, you do get an extra turret. And the armor. It says 6 to 140 on the Charlemagne, which is comparable to the Martel Algerie 6 to 110. What that means without an armor view, you really have no idea. That It's probably more heavily armored turrets or something like that, you know. But anyways, both these ships do have armor. You can potentially bounce cruiser AP quite successfully. Battleships, you're still going to want to severely angle your ship when you're getting shot at. And I'll try and point out instances in these games, but I think it's probably appearing multiple times of both of them. You're still going to take some damage, especially with higher caliber battleships. They can potentially just wreck you even if you're very steeply angled. So you do have to keep that in mind. It's kind of the primary difference between the heavy cruisers, the tier 6 and 7 French cruisers, and the light cruisers that preceded it. Those ships are actually a lot harder to sink it because the overpens are rampant on that battleships have a very hard time sticking citadel shots that actually land in the ship or go off in the ship whereas these ones because of the extra armor it'll help you a little bit with cruisers again but it's gonna make you susceptible to those devastating strikes so tier 6 tier 7 French cruisers you need to be back line you're a support ship and you need to be basically laying down harassment fire, trying to maintain your health by dodging shots as best as possible. Now because of that dodging principle, that's why I have both the Tech Tree ships specced out with double rudder shift mod. That's what I was planning on using them with this one, used it for about the first half of my games. I've played about 10-12 games so far, so this is an early impression video like I normally do with new premiums. But the Charlemagne, you have a 5.5 rudder shift so you got 3.7 Algerie, 3.8 Martel, 5.5 on the Charlemagne that's with the double rudder shift so you're already kind of less maneuverable and I find that because of that if you get too close to them you're gonna start to have a really hard time dodging shots so you want to be playing these ships back line anyways but if you accidentally drift forward I think you got a little bit more escapability in the Algerie and compared to the Charlemagne. So because of this more limited maneuverability, I'm analyzing the ship. Where does it favor where does it compare comparably or favorably, excuse me, to the Elgery? Detectability was one spot. You got eleven point nine base compared to twelve point five. Now with the concealment mod and the double concealment build, I got that down to ten point three, which is pretty good for the tier. Um, that's comparable to the other ships that I've experimented with the double concealment build. So, giving yourself that concealment, that's going to give you a bit of a buffer, and it's going to give you more wiggle room. So, if you find yourself in a situation that's getting kind of hot, you can just stop firing those guns for 20 seconds, sail out, and you'll have more room to escape from the enemy detecting you than you would be with the double rudder ship. So... I could go back and forth. I think they're both solid builds, but if you have the the capabilities of running concealment builds and you understand them, then that might certainly be an option. You can try that on all the French cruisers, frankly. Now here, this is... I always 
say if you run into someone or if someone runs into me, the map's pretty damn big. There's no real reason to be bunched up like this. This was my fault turning into him. I thought he was going to do something that he didn't do. I don't know if I actually hit him, but he didn't seem too perturbed by it. The problem with doing that, though, as you saw, I almost got blasted by... he. Did, I'm not detected here. You can see that shot was 100% intended for that battleship that I was, you know, inadvertently and irresponsibly that close to. But it almost cost me my life, you know. And that's the thing with the Charlemagne. That's the thing with the Algerie, the Charles Martel. If you get a shot in the side from a battleship and you don't die, you're pretty lucky. You know, it's, these things are... Big citadels, easy to sink for battleships, especially if you're horizontal to them. So just, you gotta really be focused on your angling at all times here. Now the gun stats on the Charlemagne compared to the Algerie, not very impressive. You got comparable range, 15.3 compared to 15.2 in favor of the Algerie. Reload favors the Algerie 12 seconds to 13 seconds. And for comparison's sake, the Martel's 8.8, .8, which is what makes that ship so effective. At least if you spec it out for the, you know, the DPM focused build like I do. But, you know, even though it's kind of shaped like a mini Martel, or it's, you might think it's just a down tiered Martel, the Martel's main strength is that awesome reload, and this is on the opposite side of that from the Algerie, so it's not a DPM monster by any chance by any uh, stretch of the imagination. Turret Traverse, likewise, 23 seconds on the Charlemagne compared to 20 and a half on the Algerie. So again, slower there, worse gun stats. Still pretty good Turret Traverse for the tier, keep in mind, but not as good as the Tech Tree Algerie. HE damage, you know, about 200 less on these guns compared to the Algerie. 1% less fire chance. Identical Torps, so I mean, comparable weapon systems. But the Algerie, on paper at least, um, is better, and based on playing this ship, you know, 10, 12 games again, whatever it was, that seems to be my impression as well. I mean, they're, neither of them are offensive powerhouses. You need to stay alive for the entire match and just kind of gradually wear people down to be effective in these two ships. But the Algerie, slightly better weapons platform. So really, and then another key difference I forgot to mention, this thing has 30,000 health, Algerie 35,600, which is already, you know, I mean, I guess that's, you know, above average on that one. This one, the Charlemagne, though, basically the lowest at the tier, ex excluding the Atlanta, which is kind of, you know, a pure light cruiser, so you'd expect that one to have a little bit less in the HP department, but... You know, combined with the brittleness of the armor, the low HP, it just makes this ship a very challenging ship to play. I think the French cruisers in general are quite challenging, not exactly beginner friendly. If you're looking for like a beginner type <laughs> cruiser premium, this is not what I'd recommend for you. If you like the French cruisers, particularly Algerie, that's the one it plays most comparably to then you probably like this ship, but the carry potential, in my opinion, on this ship is about the same as the Algerie, which is low. It's very hard to carry games in this because you have to be positioned, you know, basically at the rear. You have to just gradually wear people down with damage, and then that's how you're effective on this. Whereas ships that you can carry in, you can be more aggressive with them and get away with what you're trying to do, on occasion at least. But this ship, it just doesn't have the durability, so it is a support ship. I mean, if you enjoy the playstyle of a support ship cruiser, which can be fun. It can be an effective ship, by the way, but that's what it is. And if that appeals to you, you might certainly like the Charlemagne. If not, might be other cruisers out there I'd recommend over this one. Rest of the stats-wise, they're pretty comparable in maneuverability. This one's a knot faster than the Algerie. Algerie is... Uh, 30 degree circle or whatever it is better turn radius um, than this one and again the rudder shift is better on the Algerie making it more nimble so analyzing the ship what are its strengths compared to its tech tree counterpart you get one extra gun and you get about 0.6 give or take better concealment so 
for me, specking this out, initially I was going to be playing that dodgy rudder shift game. Again, focusing on the double rudder shift mods. And of course I run Rue, which is also promoting your ability to shift your rudder quickly. But it just seemed like it was a just a little bit of a step too slow to be completely relying on that. So that's why I built in this double concealment plus switched out the second steering gear for the concealment mod. And that brings you down to 10.3 detectability compared to 12.5 uh, on the Algerie. And again, the Al that's an Algerie not set up for um, a concealment build. Keep in mind, more of a double rudder shift build. But that's a significant difference right there. So if you want to aggressively highlight one of the ship's strengths compared to its tech tree counterpart, the concealment department is kind of your only real opportunity to do so as you can't affect you can't capitalize on the amount of guns and the gun performance isn't strong enough to warrant trying to maximize those compared to an Algerie anyways if you're trying to create value in the Charlemagne as compared to the tech tree ship which makes sense to do I mean when you're buying a premium you really want it to be unique in some way so in my mind specking out the concealment builds is probably the best way to utilize the Charlemagne and again this is an early impression but I did probably on average 20k more damage with the second build the concealment build than I was doing with the earlier one now neither of these matches are going to be real barn burners here these aren't ships that you're going to want to go out there and try and use to get like a 150k damage mission for instance but these are both kind of good examples in my opinion of how you'd want to be playing these ships again kind of a slow grindy type of a uh, play style where you just kind of want to lean on the enemy and wear them down so this ship does pretty well on shards or i think the french cruisers do in general i like to be pretty mobile on this map with the cruisers and these ships do have the good speed and kind of the kiting philosophy to utilize these wide stretches of open water in the back here so i like playing these french cruisers on this map in general what I'm trying to do here is just kind of move into sea a little bit and that'll allow me to kite away for longer periods of time while keeping that enemy within my firing range. I'm also keen on getting a uh, torp salvo off here. I didn't remember exactly when I was aiming that if I had one launcher or two on the side. You just have the one, but that's kind of where you'd want to launch that first one. It's kind of as close to that island as you can without clipping it. Potentially a destroyer pushing into cap would be hugging that lane, so... Getting a blind fire torp is never a bad idea. Now I here I'm doing the opposite of what I said what I wanted to do, which is play this ship fluidly and in motion. But I see this guy's deploying smoke and I take a look at him and it's a USN destroyer. If you can get cruisers into USN destroyer smokes, that's an extremely strong position to be in. It's a two minute duration, give or take, depending on the particular USN ship. But it's a very long time to be able to fire from that smoke undetected. You do have a smoke fire concealment penalty in cruisers, but it's not big enough that if you're at kind of medium long to long range, those ships are going to be able to pick up on you. So getting into those smokes is a good play usually. This one I don't think it panned out though because I was kind of already going forward. My momentum was going away from me. By the time I saw the smoke becoming available, it took me you know about three quarters of the duration of the smoke cloud just to get in here and i did open myself up to one shot that could have potentially caused quite a bit of damage because i was broadside of that target down range there so risky play not a lot of payoff but i agree with my overall thinking which is you want to be looking for clouds especially those usn destroyer clouds those are the best clouds in the game for cruisers at least out of the ships we have right now and that's a strong play. If you're going to be playing Divisions a lot, and you have a player that likes to play Destroyers, and one that likes to play Cruisers, hop into those USN Cruisers, lay those smokes down, and then the Cruiser can just sit back in there and just bomb on people. You move out of the cloud as the Destroyer, spot those targets downrange. You can just lay into them, and unless they're really good at blind firing, they're going to have a hard time returning fire on that ship. So look for opportunities to use that smoke as a Cruiser whenever you can. So despite kind of taking an ill-advised, or making an ill-advised play here off the bat, 
We still have about 25k damage, which for a 30,000 HP ship, we're trying to get to 30,000 to at least justify our presence in this game. So that's not a bad start for this particular ship. And, but, you know, again, we were not in a great position to continually deal damage, and we had kind of a bit more of a down turn than we would have had we just sailed basically in the line I'm doing now. But moving back and forth between C and B, kind of on this rear line, you can cover both caps effectively, and you can just kind of hound whatever ship you have the best shot at. You want to be shooting battleships, wear them down with this HE, the fires. But if you have shots at destroyers that are going to pop up, like I think we'll have a couple coming up here soon, you're going to want to take those shots. These guns are still accurate. Keep in mind this is a double concealment, so I don't have my high-level norm, Scott, informing the accuracy of this ship. But you can see the guns are still quite accurate. And the more I'm playing cruisers, the less value I think norm Scott really has. Because they're inherently very accurate um, ships to begin with. Whereas Cunningham, I think, is immensely valuable for battleships. And I would have a hard time not running him on any battleship build. I'm starting to come of the mind that maybe sooner or later I won't run Norm Scott on most, if any, of my cruiser builds. But I did put, you know, he's a level 16, I think, legendary 2 commander, so... I'm in no rush to phase them out, but that's just something I'm starting to think about. You got, you, let me know in the comments if you run cruisers without Norm Scott. Let me know how it performs for you. I'm, you know, again, this is still kind of an early concept that I'm coming up with. So now analyzing this point at the match here, we have A and C, the wings. They have B, the middle. It's close enough on score, close enough on ships that you basically need to be playing for a win on points at this point in the game. And in order to win on points, you're going to have to control two-thirds of this map. And right now, and by that I mean you're going to have to control two-thirds that are contiguous. So B and C or B and A is the end goal. You want to confine the enemy into one-third of the map. Even if they have that one capture point, you can just hold them off by controlling those two. It's much harder to defend two caps that are separated by the one in the middle because your force has to be divided to cover them both. And then if they're more clumped up like they are in this situation, they can focus fire one group or the other and potentially swing the score around on points and ships very quickly. So right now I think what I should be doing is focusing on supporting the ships on B. When I was playing this game, I was supporting the ships on C, which have all died now. So I'm kind of taking it upon myself to defend this point. But as you can see, there's a destroyer on the point, and I can't do anything about him. So I'm not really supporting this cap at all. In fact, I'm just kind of harassing them long range, which isn't a bad thing for this ship to be doing, keep in mind. But in terms of winning the game here, now that I'm watching the replay, I think supporting these ships on B by moving in the direction I am now and driving them northward with the rest of my team would have been the better play. We need to get on B as quick as possible and then confine them to that northeast corner. At least if it's going to fall down to points, which most domination mode games, you know, more often than not they do. Or that at least influences how you have to play it too. If you're controlling, you know, the bulk of the map, then you can play more defensively. So, very important concept there watching this replay. I think I missed that, but... I think we won this game anyways, so didn't end up costing us. <laughs> so at this point, we actually dropped spot. You can see that destroyer on C was spotting us for a long time. And here I kind of, maybe I didn't notice I was unspotted briefly, but I doubt it. I think I just was impatient there. The One of the advantages of the concealment build, you can see that buffer zone between your detectability and your firing range. And these ships that could spot me over there were in that band. So I could have begun turning the ship around and getting into a kiting position. Allowed me to dodge some damage a lot easier. And by firing, you know, I obviously increased my detection range to the full limit. So, a bit of a mistake there. But if you're going to play the concealment build, you might as well take advantage of what it provides for you. So there we launched some torps at the Iowa. He looked like he was about to die anyways, but you just never know. Either he one-shots you or the other guy that's trying to kill him. He can always get away. So we put him down there, and there's no other 
targets that we expect to be able to torp anyways coming up. So I don't have a problem with kind of randomly throwing the torps out there like that. You know, it just provides extra distractions out there for any ships that might be coming around to them. So that's what I was thinking there. At this point, we're kind of driving them back. They're down to two destroyers here. One of them's running away. Looks like garbage time at this point, so I'm probably just going to go capture C. And what's that you say? He gone? So I'll teach you a trick here. If you randomly lay down torpedoes that happen to clip someone, always, always tell them that they were predictive torps. It'll make you look like a really big genius. So what happened in this case, this guy was last spotted on C roughly five, six minutes ago. And I just carefully analyzed where you could possibly be five minutes later and put those torps right down there. I just made them look pretty casual, like I was trying to shoot that Iowa or whatever. No, 100% predictive. So, you know, if you get good, son, you can make shots like that. <laughs> so, obviously I'm kidding, but... But if you're torping the general area of where the enemy is located, you can actually get lucky once in a while doing that. So, never hurts to cover the area that you suspect the enemy to be enemy to be located in. So Charlemagne on the all in all, I think it's a good ship. I my early impression is I'm not getting a lot of differentiation in the positive direction from the Algerie. I and mean, then extra concealment's nice and it changes the ship's playstyle a bit, but if you like the French cruisers, you probably like this one. If you don't like the French cruisers, you probably won't. Pretty straightforward. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. A lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you. And we'll see you all later. All right, peace.